Hello, welcome to the Elk Roots YouTube channel. My name is Jessica. Today's tutorial is how to pin baste a quilt. So there's lots of different ways. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of different ways to baste a quilt. You can do a spray adhesive, which is super popular. You can pin it, which is my preferred method. You can do it on the floor. You can do it on a wall. You can do it on a table. Remember, we're talking about basting a quilt here. Okay, let's just keep it G-rated, guys. So there's a lot of different ways to baste a quilt. But it actually seems to be one of the steps that's the most difficult for a lot of quilters. And I would say a lot of beginner quilters, but I would, I mean, even experienced quilters. So today I'm going to show you my favorite way to baste a quilt. Now I have used the spray method before, which I know a lot of people are big fans of. It's just, it's a messy. And I don't know. I, I've tried to spray baste my quilts outside in a driveway. And that's very dirty. And then I would try to spray baste inside and the fumes from the glue, they, they get to you after a little bit. And I just kept thinking like that, that can't be good, right? That can't be good. So I bit the bullet and I was like, ah, all right. You know, a lot of quilters that I have a lot of respect for pin based their quilt. And it just seemed like this is no way. This is gonna be impossible. But I started it, you know, and I actually like it. I prefer it. It's not as challenging as you think it is. You have got to let the perfectionist in you go. They have to leave, okay? I know we're quilters and we want the perfect points and we want the perfect seams and everything's gotta be just perfect, perfect, perfect. But you've gotta let it go. It's just not gonna do you any good here. It's not gonna really do you good anywhere honestly, but it's especially not going to do you any good right now because we've got the more relaxed you can be while you do this, the better it's going to look. The more tightly wound you are and trying to get everything just perfectly flat and perfectly taut, you're going to just drive yourself crazy trying to do this, which is great for the long armors out there who are going to be making money off of your quilt. But for us here, we are trying to do it ourselves. So before we get started in the tutorial, let me just remind you to please subscribe down below. Give this video a like if at any point you like the video. Comment down below if you have any questions, if you have any other suggestions, if you have a different method that you're just like, no way, no how, pins are lame, this is the way I do it, let me know. I'd love to hear. All right, so let's get started. All right. Base in a quilt, that's right. Quilt sandwich, that's what I call it. I mean, that's what everybody calls it. It's not my term, it's everybody's term. But it's the only type of sandwich that this girl right here makes. Mama done cook. So quilt sandwiches are fun. You just need a few things. And I'm going to show you. First thing, you need a quilt top. So this is my quilt top. It's a lot bigger than this. So like, like a lot, like a lot bigger than this. But just to kind of give you an idea, this is my folded up quilt top. You're also going to need the back, right? We got the top. Now we need the back. Quilt back. This is going to be my quilt back. If you notice... This is a bed sheet. So I buy those packages of bedding, right? So you get the fitted sheet, you get the flat sheet, and you get the pillowcases. I use the fitted sheet, I use the pillowcases. <laughs> I have never used a flat sheet in my life. And props to all you out there who are like immaculate beds with all your layers. But there's just no way. I mean, the fact that I have my bed made every day makes me feel like a pretty dang good adult. But if there's a, a flat sheet involved, like this just pfft, not happening. So I actually have a lot of these flat sheets just kind of laying around. And I used to chunk them, but now I keep them. And I use them for quilt backs because these things are really comfy. And I have to be honest with you, the quilts that I have made where I used a sheet instead of like quilt cotton get a lot more use because it's, I mean, come on, this is made for the bed, right? This is made to be snuggled. So this is what I will be using for my backing. Besides the front and the back, you're gonna need the middle. You're gonna need the, I mean, I guess you don't put the meat and the potatoes inside of a sandwich. Like I said, guys, I don't make sandwiches. I don't cook. You need the uh, Swiss and the salami. There we go. Here's our Swiss and salami, the batting. All right, we could have a whole video on what kind of batting to use. I mean, it's, whoo, if you, Go to my Instagram account, at Oakley Roots on Instagram. You will see I have a highlight of stories where I used a wool batting. And a lot of people swear by wool batting. So I was like, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me, right? So I went on to a website that I will not name and I will not share. 
and I ordered wool batting. And just so you know, don't worry, this website does not sell it anymore. I worked with them after this. Don't worry, just hold on. So I went on this website and I bought wool batting. And I made probably the most, one of the most beautiful quilts I've ever made. I'll put a screenshot like right here. Look at that. Oh, I know. Beautiful, beautiful quilt. I made it for my mom. It had rayon backing. It was all hand quilted. It was all hand quilted. It was, it was all hand quilted. And then my mom washed it. And after she washed it, ma, here's a picture. That's what happened to it. The wool batting shrunk. Yeah, it was awful. It was just awful. I don't know if you're supposed to pre-wash your wool batting, but there's, I don't even pre-wash my fabric that I use for quilts, which you should probably do it, but I don't. Um, there's no way I'm pre-washing my batting. Can you imagine trying to get all that? No, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. So tears were shed and I unpicked the entire quilt on all the hand quilting. And I tried to get all the creases out of the quilt top and the backing. I ironed, I pressed, I soaked, I ironed, I pressed, I soaked, I ironed, I pressed, I soaked. I threw away the wool batting. I contacted the company that I bought it from and was like, this is not okay. It's fine. And they do not sell that wool batting anymore. I will not use wool batting again. My favorite batting is this bamboo blend. I love this stuff. I have a link. I have a link for everything I talk about down below. But this bamboo batting is perfection. It's light, but it's fluffy. So it's lightweight. It keeps your quilt nice and light, but still comfy. So you can use it all season. But it also gives it a nice poof because that's what you want when you're quilting your quilt. You don't just want like, you know, fabric on fabric on fabric because then it's just like a big, you know, thick piece of fabric. You want it to have a little, whoosh, a little zhuzh, 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 right? That's what we want because that's what makes it feel just so snuggly. And this stuff is great. So I will have a link for this down below. Also, you're gonna need your pins. You're gonna need special pins. So here's how I keep all my pins. Look, ah, this is a magnetic dish bowl that's just on top of this box. So they're all sticking and they're falling everywhere. But these are my pins, they're everywhere. There's lots of different sizes you can see. The one thing about these pins is that they are curved. So can you see that? There we go. So see how this is curved? And there's different sizes. That was a bigger one, here's a smaller one. There's all different sizes. You should decide which one you're comfortable with. I'll use all of them together, honestly. I'm not I'm not terribly picky about this, but you just, you need a lot of them. You need a lot of pins. And because you're gonna be using a lot of pins, you're gonna need another tool that's gonna help you close them. And this is what I use, a quick clip. I highly suggest you get one of these. I'll have a link below. I don't think it's terribly expensive, but when you're pinning, and then when you have to clip them all, this is gonna save your hands and your nails. Like, like it's actually gonna save your nails because your nails will be gone if you don't use something like this. I'm just telling you. And the last thing we're gonna need is some tape. This is good tape. I have no idea what the brand is. I will have a link for this down below because I'm pretty sure I have this on auto delivery from Amazon because I use it so much. But this stuff is heavy duty tape. It's super sticky. It's going to keep everything in place. Nothing's moving around but it's not gonna leave any sort of glue or anything on your floors or your walls or anywhere else, which I think is fantastic. So there's all of our materials. The first thing we have to do before we start making the sandwich is we have to press our quilt top and our quilt backing. So I'm gonna go to the iron and I'm going to press this and I'm going to press my top and then we will get started. Okay, so when I press my quilt back, I'm not gonna be too crazy about it, right? Because we're going to be moving this quilt around. It's not like you're going to lay this flat on the floor and then you're going to lay your quilt top and your batting flat and then you're going to pin it and then you're going to keep it flat and then you're going to quilt it flat. I mean, the quilt is going to get wrinkled again, all right? We just want it flat so that we don't have anything like this, right? We don't want anything, any of these big creases like this with these folds and then pin it like that and then we quilt it like that and then we have a crazy back. So really we're just ironing it so that it lays nice and flat and most of that work is honestly gonna be done on our hands and knees when we're taping it to the floor. So at this point in your quilting journey, your quilt top has probably been pressed a few times already. So if it's just been sitting on a shelf for a while, just give it a, just give it a, a light press, but your quilt top is probably in pretty good shape and you don't really need to do much with it. All right, so the next step is actually making the quilt sandwich, which is gonna take some space. 
So my quilt is a very large throw sized, so I need a larger space to do this. Now I happen to have tile floors, so this is gonna be great for me. If you have wood floors, it should also be good. You're just gonna need to be careful with your pins. But I know a lot of quilters that pin on wood floors all the time. That's gonna be your, it's gonna be up to you. If you have a big tiled floor area, that's the ideal place to do this. Tile, linoleum, anything like that. That's gonna be great. You're not, you're not gonna do this very well on carpet. I'm sorry to say, it's just, it's just, I mean, I don't even, you know, I'd be willing to give it a shot, honestly. Like, I'd be willing to try it for you, but I'm gonna say carpet's probably not gonna be your friend when you're pin basting. It's just not, sorry. If you don't have a big space in your house like this, driveway. Go out in the driveway in the morning when it's not raining, when it's not windy, when it's not, you know, when it's just very calm, go in your driveway. If you have a back porch, if you got a wooden back porch or a concrete back porch, go out there, just find any space. If you still are having trouble, go to a local quilt shop. A lot of times they'll have big tables for classes and you can go in there and you can push the tables together and you can pin baste your quilt in there. Some quilt shops might charge you for this. M many probably won't, but I would call around and ask. The big thing is, is you need one big space that you can lay out your quilt to pin base. Using this method, there is another method where we use a table and I will show you that in another video, I promise, because that is another way I based very large quilts. I'm going to clear out my room and move my Sleeping Beauty over here and get my floor all ready so that we can make this sandwich. So follow along. space cleared out you can see well you know except for those beautiful babies but we got our space cleared out so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay out my quilt back which is my blue sheet and I'm going to lay it right side down so looking at my sheet uh, honestly my sheet either one is gonna be a right side since I'm the only thing that determines what's the right and wrong side of these side seams here and uh, I don't really care but I'm gonna say this is my right side, so I'm gonna lay it right side down. And what I'm gonna do is once I have it laid all the way right side down, I'm going to take my tape, I'm gonna tape all around the edge of the quilt back. That is not why I put it there, Moose. We have our backing taped down. Now we're gonna add the middle, which is the batting. I got a king size batting, which is way too big for this project. So I'm gonna lay it out and then I'm gonna trim it. Oh yeah, that feels good. That feels real good. All right, let's go lay it out. Right, so we have our batting laid out. I'm not that crazy about my batting being flat. I don't actually tape the sides of the batting down. I just kind of lay it out nicely and smoothly because once I get the quilt top on, I'm going to be hand smoothing it out over and over and over again that I'm, I don't have any bumps in my batting when I'm done. I just roll out my batting so that it's fairly smooth, but I'm not worried about it being like stretched really taut. And when you're doing your backing too, don't stretch it. Just let it be nice and flat and smooth and then tape it. So the next part is the quilt top. We gotta put the quilt top on the top of the sandwich. So the quilt top is gonna go right side up, pretty side up. Here is my quilt top. Now I'm gonna go lay it down on here. Since my backing doesn't have any sort of a print or anything like that, I don't care kind of where it goes just as long as there's enough backing to cover the entire quilt top. If you're a backing, has a design or something like that, you need to make sure you know what you want included in your backing and maybe mark it with some washi tape or something. 
because it's very easy at this step to get this off center because you can't really see your backing. So I'm gonna go lay this down just in the middle knowing that there are there's plenty of fabric all around the edges of my quilt top with the backing. So as you can see, I didn't tape it down. When I, when I put the quilt top on, I just kind of smoothed it all out with my hands, but I didn't actually tape it down anywhere because I don't need to. I'm going to do this with my hands with the pinning. So now we have our backing and our batting and our quilt top. All we have to do now is put the pins in. This is easy, but it does take some time. So let's get down to the floor and go put our pins in. So when pinning, I like to start in the middle of the quilt and then I just work my way out up and then I work my way down. So I start in the very middle and work out and then up and then down. And this is gonna allow me to keep pushing gently, not tugging, not pulling, right? I'm not, I'm not stretching anything here. I'm just gently pushing down my fabric and my batting and then pinning it to the back. The back, I don't have to worry about. I taped that sucker down. That back is flat, right? But the middle and the top, I have to, I have to finagle just a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna slowly make my way. Pins should be about a fist, a fists, a fist about a fifth width apart. I know if you have a big quilt, it's a lot of pins, but you don't wanna have too much spreading out because then it's gonna be harder for you to work with later. I usually kind of find a block design and like a couple blocks that I like to put the pins in and then I just do it everywhere. So that's what we're doing now. So if you notice, whenever I'm putting the pins in, I'm not closing them. I just take them and I go through the top layer, the backing, back up to the top, and I leave them open. I'm gonna go through this at the end and I'll close them all up in one, one swoop around. But for now, I'm just putting them in and leaving them open. to do the other side. Yes, I am sitting on these pins that are not closed. I am doing it gently. You don't scoot when you're on the pins. You lift and then lower. Lift and lower. entire quilt basted we're going to take our quick clip and see if I can get you nice and close down here all right so to do this you just take the safety pin and then the ridges on this quick clip see there's these little ridges you just notch the sharp end in one of those ridges so see you just kind of like put it underneath it pull it up to the safety pin and clip it and it's just like that. It's extremely simple to use and it saves your fingernails because normally I would use my fingernails probably for this. So go over your entire quilt and clip all of your safety pins. 
All right, so once you have your entire quilt pinned, all you have to do is trim the edges and then you're done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some very sharp fabric scissors. I like to use Kai scissors and I'll have a link for them down below. And I'm going to leave about three inches around the edge of my quilt top. So I'll have my quilt top and then I'll have about three inches of batting and three inches of backing extra on all sides. And I'm just gonna cut, 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 cut. And then we're done with our quilt sandwich. So let's wrap it up. very easy to pin base a quilt. Now all I have to do is start marking this and decide how I'm going to quilt it, take it to the machine, quilt it up, bind it, and I'm done. Whoo! Quilts are a lot of work. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe down below so you can keep up to date with all the new tutorials. We're going to have a whole lot more quilting tutorials and a whole lot more seasonal tutorials, which I'm super excited about because Pumpkin spice latte season is coming, you know, as well as Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas. Very excited about that. I got a lot of cool ideas for things we can do with that. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe down below. Give this video a like, comment, comment, comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know, do you think this you can do this? Have you done it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you have a different way you prefer to do it? Do you have like 10 quilt tops that you have not sandwiched yet because you don't want to do this step? It's okay, I do too. So thanks again for stopping by. Get out there and make something. Bye.